medications that are then not controlled. Condition. Yes, I mean, for example, of those such as paracetamol, I mean, I just have a slight headache, I'm having a little cough, but I don't have to go through the processes of seeing a doctor. You can actually just uh, walk over the counter and get this medication. So those are the uh, over-the-counter medications. The other group prescription only. Mm. It has to be dispensed only by, by uh, a prescription of a medical doctor, a certified physician. Okay. Okay. Uh, looking at uh, what would you say, what drugs, like you, though you've mentioned some part of it, uh, but in specific terms, uh, what drugs are likely easier to be abused? Uh, because I know there's a drug called Fortuin injection, uh, which is used to ease pains. Uh, how easy is it for patients to get addicted to Fortuin, for instance? And would you label that as a drug abuse? Uh, yes. Mm, we're going too far, but I would, we could start from it. there. No, we yeah. could actually start from there. Right. It, you, there are classes of medications called opioid analgesics. Uh, these are the okay. group of med opioid, O-P-O-I-D-S. Yeah. Because these are the group of medications that are actually used to manage pain. Okay? okay. You have excessive pain, moderate to severe pain. Okay. You have an accident, you need immediate relief use those medications okay, okay? And, but those medications are always used within a clinical fa facility it's usually only prescription only medication because you need a professional to administer those medications and you need a professional to dispense those medications okay, okay? so for twin yes of course uh, uh, like uh, i think one of the main drugs there should be pentazosin it's a very very strong uh, uh, pain killer yeah, in, in layman's time is a very very pain, uh, strong painkiller however sometimes when you administer the medication there's this uh, euphoria that comes with it it's the euphoria that people bank on basically they want that feeling again and okay, that's so why people so it can be abused of course i mean we have had uh, criminal activities patients that are so smart that yeah. sometimes they copy prescriptions duplicate prescriptions take them elsewhere to get that same drug so, of course, uh, uh, Fortwin can be uh, uh, abused. All right, uh, in terms of uh, being abused, uh, w let's look at uh, what are the risk factors uh, when drugs are abused? What are the likely risk factors uh, that will, you know, come to lead to, yeah. to, to drug addiction? Well, the risk factors can be categorized into three major subgroups. I would like to categorize them into the first group, I like to call them the vulnerable group, the people that are vulnerable. I'll give you an example, people that you drop in crutch, for example, that other people take care of. Okay. They are vulnerable to anything you give them. They have not gone to that stage where they can make decisions of right and wrong. So whatever you administer to them, for example, you know they are vulnerable, they don't know anything. Two, you have family history. When you have people within the family that abuse medications, it is most likely that other members of the family will also abuse those medications. Why the is it that way? Uh, it's not hereditary, so why is it likely to go that direction? Uh, yes, because um, whatever you see your parents doing, for example, automatically you think that is right. right. It's difficult to beat it out of your mind to actually say, no, this is the wrong thing to do because you have this belief that your parents are supposed to groom you in the right way. Okay, and other people in that risk group as well are people that have medical conditions that actually need those medications because you actually have some medical conditions that actually you actually need those medications to treat them so over long over a long period of time however they, d they develop what we call uh, tolerance or dependence their body cannot function except with that medication mm. so that's the first group the second group is i call the social cycle in this social cycle you have uh, quite a lot of individuals there uh, you work environmental factors come into play. You grow up in an environment where people think taking drug is the main thing. They don't see it as any yeah. being anything drug. Yeah. They, they <laughs> see it as, as food. Just like you see food, that's how they see it. So it's difficult. You know, people usually, usually just get absorbed into that kind of community because of the social lifestyle mm -hmm. of the community. Yeah. And still in that group, you have peer pressure. Of course, it's my oh. friend. Uh, this is what he's doing. I need to fit in that group. He takes this. This is how he performs. So I need to give it a try. And the last group, which actually should be first, is the individual, you know, uh, as, as a person. We all have challenges in life, you okay. know. We're all dealing with one form of problem mm -hmm. or the other, you know. For adolescents, I mean, it could be in school. 
you know, I'm having challenges reading, I need to read longer, I need to pass my exams, what can I do? And I talk to one or two people, oh, you can use this, you can use this. I remember back in the days, there used to be Nescape. I don't know if we mm-hmm. went through that. Was Nescape? Nescape. Was it really effective? Because some persons, it never works. Exactly. Like for me, I, I, I couldn't tell if I, it, it didn't make any difference to me. Exactly, and that is where biological makeup comes in. Okay. For, the, for some people, you just take a spoon and it knocks you off. For some people, oh you boy. take a whole can, you know what those scans, yeah. and you don't have any effect. It doesn't have any effect rather on your, on your system. You know, then for, for, some, for some people, it's just experimental. Oh, wow, I see people taking this. I see it over the media. I see it in music videos, people taking this and that. What does it feel like? Let me experiment. And then they fall into that. Uh, they fall, they, uh, that becomes a risk for them. They start, and going back becomes a different story. All right, so let's look at uh, the issue of uh, uh, impact. Uh, before we go global, the global impact of uh, drug abuse, mm-hmm. can we narrow it down to Nigeria? Yes. And uh, what would you say it's uh, the impact in Nigeria? Uh, well, it's not when you talk about drug abuse and its impact, either locally or globally, the impact is usually negative, you know. But then the impact in terms of population, uh, down here in Nigeria, I remember last year there was a survey that was released actually by the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime okay. down here in Nigeria. And they said an estimated uh, 14 million users of drugs. Okay, 14 million 14 users. 14 million users. And you have about 3 to 4 million uh, people from that population that are actively involved in drug abuse. It's two things, uh, being a user and then being in the cycle of drug addiction. Of course, being you start being, uh, a, you, you, okay. you start being, a, you, you, you start from that point of okay. abusing the drug and then over a particular time, period of time, you become addicted to the drug. So, when you say period of time, uh, yeah. is there a time frame? Could you say six months, a year? I know, it actually depends on the agent. Okay? okay, for some people, I know of alcoholics that have been take, drinking for a very long time, they're still not addicts. They still binge drink, they can't control them, themselves. They don't yeah. drink to stupor, for example. Okay. You get but they have that habit okay. that they can't do with it. However, you have some people that they just started last week and they drink to stupor, they carry them home. <laughs> you get it, so biological makeup actually comes, comes to into play, into play okay. as well. However, um, no matter how you want to look at it, Three million is still a very, very huge number. I mean, Nigeria is a Three country million active, active okay. people involved in drug abuse or substance abuse. Okay. Nigeria is a country, I think the last census, was it 2016? Going by that last census, I think we're about 180 million. Mm-hmm. But going by the world population data, we're about 206 Two million. million. Let's yeah. take an average, about 200 million. For example, Nigeria has uh, about 774 local government. If you take that 20, uh, that 14 million, and split it in that local government. You have close to 15 to 20,000 people, on average. I don't know, my mental arithmetic okay. tells me between 50, 15 to 20,000 people in every local government, government all right. that are actively involved in drugs. Even if it's 1,000 in that drug, in that, in that community, it's far too much, okay? Uh, let's be realistic. I mean, we've heard about, you may, you may most likely you have known someone that abuses drugs, but if you don't, you know someone that knows someone that abuses drugs. And if you don't, you know someone that knows someone that knows someone that abuses drugs. Now, if we have someone that abuses drugs within this vicinity, say in, in, in Jabi, okay. none of us is safe. That's just the truth. Because their mindset is not the same as yours. The way we understand, we breathe oxygen. They breathe, they breathe drugs. Okay. okay, so whatever they can do to get their drugs, they will. Even if it means... I mean, killing people, they would do that just to get the means to, to take those drugs. Okay, okay. If so it's a challenge. If, yeah. that, if, if that is that devastating, uh, why would you say countries like South Africa, Holland, why would they legalize drugs? Well, you see, they are legalizing because their system is um, more perfect than our own. Let me put it that way. They have covered, they've blocked most of the holes, even though they haven't. Actually, these drugs have medicinal uses. Okay. Okay. That. Right. However, the problem so is... it's not all negative? No, it's not all negative. Okay. You have medicinal uses okay. for some of these drugs. However, those, medici- those medications have to be used under the supervision of a professional medical officer. You don't okay. get to do. And that is where we have the problem. Because some of these medications, they leak out. 
and it become a problem okay okay i remember a week or so back it was up in the legislature I yeah, think so they, yeah, they, they said they, 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 they wanted to legalize it in cannabis Nigeria. Cannabis as well. Yeah, yeah cannabis yeah. as well. Yeah. You see, it takes a lot to institute that. We have to, we should have the infrastructure first to uh, c- control it. When you talk infrastructure, yeah. what are the key infrastructure that would be needed to control it? Because uh, even before it's legalized, we know lots of people do it. So uh, what's going to happen if it's not legalized? So what are the structures you think n- needs to be put in place? Before, before yeah. If um, Nigeria has to go that route. Exactly. First, we have to tighten our prescription patterns. Okay. okay? We have to block all the, the, the exits, all the flow patterns, okay. all the channels in which these medications come in. Okay? That is the first thing to okay. do. If we can block that, then we relate with the regulatory agencies, NAFDAQ, NDLEA, to know the people that actually need these medications, for example, from their data. Okay, then it comes down to the clinician. It's actually a collaborative uh, okay. so effort. It's not just, uh, it's not single-handedly. Okay, so we need to address all those issues first before we say, okay, we can legalize this. Because if you legalize something without putting uh, control measures or checks, I mean, you're only exposing your citizens to more risks. So all these things need to be addressed first before we can go. Oh, on. Okay, so let's look at, uh, you know, you mentioned some of the uh, uh, adverse effects, but let's go uh, specifically uh, talking about consequences of the drug abuse. But before we do that, I would like us to look at uh, substances and alcohol. Uh, between both houses, which of them do you think is, is the worst at evil? Of the two, those who do more of the liquid alcohol, or those who smoke cigarettes, or those who uh, go through the other means of sneaking. Okay. Uh, how would you classify these three forms of uh, abuse? Okay, first, um, they all belong to the same class, ah, okay. and there's no lesser evil. Okay. Drug so abuse. That do that, uh, I mean, drug abuse is drug abuse. Those stuff we know in the village. Uh, drug is abuse is drug is abuse. Actually, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Why? Why we shouldn't consider some lesser evil, evil than evil others evil. because i mean if someone is into this and you say okay this is a lesser evil it feels okay um i'm actually have been given the right to actually go because for this rather than because this it looks like the public it actually makes drinking a lesser evil than that but then it's not really a lesser evil it's just that it takes a longer time for addiction to set in most yeah. times for when it, comes to egg, when it comes to drinking than most of these substances that you inhale directly into your stomach but that the end point is that they cause injury to the system regardless of how you want to look at it. Um, for drinking, of course, the liver, the heart, it suffers at the end of the day, okay? But when you're talking about smoking, the lungs, the heart, the brain, so they all have different sites in which they, they act, okay? So if we need to look at the issue of drug abuse, I think we need to look at it holistically, okay. you know, discourage the use of it as much as possible. Okay, and when we cannot do that, then we talk about medical uses. How can we help these people, you know, to, uh, that, to recover from it? But the business is we need to even just prevent it if we can. Okay. Okay, uh, just taking you back to the National Assembly you mentioned, uh, do, you, do you think the, 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 out of the house, the lawmaker who uh, came up with the idea of uh, the legalizing of cannabis, uh, mm-hmm. do you think he, he was seeing it of national interest or? What do you think is really playing out, especially amidst the insecurity Nigeria is facing? Well, he gave his reasons. He wanted, he said it was a means to boost the internal generated revenue of the country. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I, I can't explain that. <laughs> I mean, he said it, that was his reason. It's a way to boost the internal generation, the internally, internally generated revenue of, the, of, of Nigeria. Uh, of course, you know, when it comes into use and people subscribe to it, maybe, I'm not speaking his mind, I don't know. Okay. Uh, when people subscribe to it and they buy, maybe he's talking about the clinical aspects okay. that, okay, patients can benefit from it, I don't know. Or he's just saying, no, you know, we can just bring it to the market, uh, let it be legalized, people can go to a place where they can get it, and well, I, I don't know his, his reasons, you know. All he said was... But from your own professional point of view, uh, let's assume he's making notes of sense <laughs> and he has his views. Uh, do you think it might be easier to curtail it if it's legalized? Because now... Uh, you can actually, uh, people could actually come out. You can actually tell the, the data of number of people who actually use it. You can actually know the 
area, specific area where it's being used, so you could probably contain them, you could, it's easier to do enlightenment and all that. Uh, to a great extent, do you think uh, there might be sense in that, if South Africa and some other countries have succeeded? Well, I wouldn't really say they've succeeded, because they still deal with issues of drug abuse. Okay. So they, I mean, yeah. well, the, the, the rate of crime is not as alarming as we have in Nigeria, that it's not even legalized in it. You know, the thing with uh, drug abuse is this, let's call it speedy speed. Okay. Um, this substance is going to the brain. They alter your brain function. Okay. Your state of mind is altered. So you wouldn't even do, know when you've carried out certain no. negative okay. activities okay. until days after you've gone out of the, 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 the euphoria, the euphoria okay. you get it so no matter how you want to to look at it it's still a danger it poses it poses a great danger to your okay. community so it has to be in a tight community just for people that need it for medicinal purposes that's what i can say but uh, mm. let's, uh, let's delve into the part where uh, signs uh, like uh, do you recognize and identify a drug abuser and uh, what are your professional advice to persons around people who do this as a way of uh, precaution? Like you said, they could go out of their way to do things either because they're in search of trying to get it or because they're already influenced. True. So we're talking about signs and symptoms. Um, it will depend on the agent in which the person is addicted to. Okay. okay? Although they have a common denominator. When it comes to physical appearance, uh, behavioral changes, for for example, most drug abusers physically you can actually see they are not quite groomed. You know, uh, they don't take care of themselves. Let me put it that way to to a layman. You know, grooming becomes a, a second option. Uh, you have these people with bloodshot eyes. You know, the eyes are is always uh, red. You know, you could you could tell by that. Uh, you have the behavior, physical appearance too. You when you're talking to them some you can actually inhale or perceive um, you know some of these substances okay then they are withdrawn some people they are withdrawn you know they socially they will know yes always they keep to themselves well, they, well, they keep secret why, group. why is that if, uh, so if it's supposed to put them in euphoria and euphoria we know is the excitement so why would they do the opposite if yeah exactly you know when you're doing something in secret something that is not bad you tend to shift to move away from people. You don't want people to 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 actually know what you're doing. So that is why they are withdrawn. They are withdrawn from the the immediate family members. They don't interact much. You know, everyone is in the sitting room. They're in the in their rooms. But you shouldn't be confused though with introverts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the secret. Uh, they have secret friends. They don't want the family to to know the friends they hang out with. They walk, they go out at late hours. You know, look at their money. How they spend money. They're always looking for money. They're always spending. <laughs> You're not you get <laughs> You don't really see what they're using it for. Then, uh, for adolescents, you look at the academic performance. It drops drastically in, in, in from from school. Their report cards, everything is down. So you know there's a question. There's a problem somewhere. So you have to investigate further. And once you sense that, I mean, it is a very very good time to come close to that family member. We should uh, discard that notion of oh, even if we know he's into it, we c this is a drug addict and we just leave him. If they, if they have that willpower to overcome it sometimes, they will. So I'm actually, some people actually have the good willpower too. But because they are under the influence, you know, they, 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 their movement, their activities is dictated by whatever is happening in their brain, they can't help it. Okay, so we should come close to them and then we could seek medical uh, advice, you know, for them. We could take them to the hospital, we could refer them to centers where we know people deal with this. And the earlier the better, we say catch them young. All right, yeah. uh, talking about centers, uh, yeah. how would you describe Nigeria's uh, capacity and competence to actually tackle in terms of having uh, adequate health professionals who could actually go out there and tackle it? And, uh, and for the role of the NDLEA, do you think their role is all encompassing? Do you think they're following their mandate or probably they're just out for the financial gains of uh, their mandate and not necessarily uh, the issue of trying to of cabbage by letting people really know why they shouldn't rather than the financial gain of okay I chose someone behind release that do you think there should be a rejig? Yes I think uh, NDLE is living up to expectations and okay. I, I stand bold to say that based on some In statistics yes based okay. on because I know uh, we have been running collaborative 
programs together with NDLEA, okay. you know, and they've been making what statements kind of, what, what kind of programs such as there? this, sensitization programs, awareness programs. They're always there. You call on them, they're always there. And I learned, I can't say for certain, that even within this Abuja, they have centers. I'm yet to locate where I'm correctional to centers to okay. help, like rehab centers, rehab, rehabilitation centers and all. So if that, if they have that, they, I think it's a good start. But I don't know about the management, how they manage the place. But having that alone, I think it's a good head start. We have to start somewhere, okay. you know. So I think they are keeping up to their mandate. All right, for, doing well. for you mm -hmm. health professionals, uh, mm -hmm. someone like you who is a clinical pharmacist, uh, how would you rate the commitment of healthcare prof professionals to actually curb uh, these drug abuse? Because we know that lots of doctors mm -hmm. use drugs. Uh, for, for me, for instance, I have an uncle who was an orthopedic surgeon. Before he entered the uh, the the uh, theater, he was going to take a, a stick of benzene and hedges, take his coffee, and before he now steps in. Uh, when you have someone and you have that picture, and now you're now telling the patient, don't do drugs, how realistic are healthcare professionals? Uh, painting this picture I just have, and I'm having a patient in front of me, I mean, you will not get any successful results. If I am indulged in it and he sees me doing it, and I'm advising him not to, obviously you're not going to get even results. Even if he doesn't see you do it, the mm -hmm. fact that you, as a health does it in secret, mm -hmm. but you're telling him don't do it, uh, is, that, is there no <laughs> big gap there that probably makes the whole campaign null and vow? Uh, it is, um, and that is why you see uh, drug abuse doesn't select, he doesn't, he doesn't choose it, its okay. victims, since health professionals too can be affected okay. by such. And they can't get uh, uh, they can't get themselves out of the grip or out of the hold okay. of it. Okay, but you know we will not just uh, say okay because Mr. A is into drugs. We we'll just sit and oh all healthcare professionals. Uh, they say in you know, every twelve you always have a Judas, <laughs> right? So we are actually trying to to promote. You know, uh, we are trying to sensitize the public, create awareness as much as we can. We have a few bad eggs that you can actually even point out and they also seek help even within the system okay. there are some that they talk to them you know they place them on leave they ask them to go for certain programs just to help them you know uh, basically overcome their addiction problems and if that doesn't happen they are being referred to other centers because you can't be a healthcare professional and endanger, endanger the lives of other people you know it's against the ethics okay. you know of, of most professions they wouldn't allow that so most of them can do that will be secretly you would never see a patient see them doing that <laughs> All right, let's look at the issue of gender yeah. in terms of drug abuse. Uh, in, in the past, it was said it was all about the male folks abusing drug abuse. But in recent surveys conducted uh, by NOI polls and other polling uh, agencies, it, it shows that women have also increased it, the number of, uh, if we had 10% before, now we are having 15 to 20 percent women involved in drug abuse and not just uh, the young ladies, not the adolescents, not the teenagers, even the married women, older women are also involved. What would you ascribe to this upsurge? Okay, we have quite a lot of economical challenges these days. All right. Like I said earlier, everyone is dealing with one problem or the or other. other yeah. Okay, we have personal problems and it's not everyone that uh, is in a position to speak about his position, uh, about his problems, okay? So most of his women become depressed sometimes, and they look out for how they could get out, I escape from that, from that, 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 that reality. Okay. Right. You get it. Of course, they have friends. They talk to friends. This is what I'm doing. And say, oh, no, this is what I do. Bad message spreads faster than wildfire. All right. <laughs> yeah, so basically, that could be part of And, you know, um, there are certain conditions too that could predispose to them. If me, we have women that uh, have been raped in the past, they have no one to talk to, they are just by themselves, totally depressed, they have to get out of that. Okay, so that can actually account for the growing statistics of women indulged in this medication, uh, drug abuse or drug addiction recently. There are quite a number of reasons, association of families, uh, peer pressure, quite a lot, lot of factors that could be Subscribe to that. All right, uh, in case you're just joining us, you're watching Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodu, and I'm with the clinical pharmacist in the studio. His name is Abdullahi Abdullahi, and he has been helping us look at uh, the issue of drug abuse, the definition, uh, what drugs can be uh, abused, uh, what are the risk factors, and also recently we we're just talking about gender, both male and female involved. 
We'll be going for a very quick break. When we return from the break, we'll be looking at other factors uh, such as uh, uh, the professional advice uh, for drug abusers and other issues and how well would you say uh, the federal government and the health care agencies have done in order to curb this uh, menace ravaging uh, Africa's biggest black nation, Nigeria, after this break? Stay with us. With 30 minutes. Welcome back here from the break. You're watching uh, Dialogue on Liberty Television. My name is Anthony Momodu, and uh, we're talking uh, uh, drug abuse, how to curb drug abuse uh, by health professionals and also patients. Uh, and uh, we've got in the studio the clinical pharmacist in the person of Abdullahi, uh, A. Abdullahi, helping us uh, look into this very interesting uh, topic, uh, which the federal government sees as very important, uh, led to the setting up uh, of a, a new presidential tax force to you know fight drug abuse especially amidst the COVID-19 pandemic all right uh, let's look at uh, the issue of uh, drug abuse uh, in some facilities not just necessary hospitals not just individuals we're looking at uh, fitness centers for instance where people go to build muscles keep fit what are the chances of drug abuse occurring in those kind of facilities or centers Okay, first of all, uh, fitness centers are supposed to be health centers to help you exercise, you know, okay. uh, and all that. But uh, recently, it's been discovered that some fitness centers engage in uh, certain illicit activities, so to say, okay. you know, or rather some people have been influenced into taking some of these drugs. The drugs abused in fitness centers quite differ from what you have, like substance abuse, smoking, and all that. Okay, they have a different category. Theirs is just to help them, it's just to help them build their muscles. Okay? okay, those are the drugs they use to help them build their, build their muscles, and over time it affects their systems. What they use there basically are what we call steroids. Steroids, yeah, okay. yeah, steroids, yeah. anabolic steroids. That is what helps you build your muscles here and there. And of course, you see, for some ladies, they get attracted by those kind of uh, six physiques, packs. six packs. You know. You've got some, right? Ah, uh, yes, I think I have. Tony Zone is one. No, Tony Zone is one pack. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, so people actually just um, they, they get attracted to that, and they want at all means, every way necessary, every way possible, they just want to get that six packs, and then you know, the people say, okay, you know, there's a shortcut to this. You take this, you take that. So anabolic anabolic steroids that they usually take has a drug, it has a, uh, a negative effect okay. on them, especially over time. Basically, steroids they exist in the body. Okay. They help you. When you say they exist in the body, are you saying naturally we produce yes. steroids? You know, naturally we produce hormones. steroids. Yes, naturally we, pro we when produce. When you produce these hormones, these steroids, is there times of anger, rage, joy, or what? No, 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 no. Steroids, steroids yeah. actually exist in the body. Okay. For males, we have more of what we call testosterone. It's actually what exactly, okay. it's actually what differentiates us from the females. Female, That's what's right. responsible for your voice, the hair, right. and what have your appearance. Right. Okay. So what they do is they take a synthetic form of these drugs, okay? They are like male hormones, but produced differently by man, man-made, okay? So one of the effects of steroids is they help you gather uh, muscles. muscles, basically. Not really muscles per se, but accumulation of fluid. And then over time, you build you know muscles. However, it comes before the muscles come. Uh, it helps. You know, it it, it uh, uh, steroids basically cause water retention. It's one. It's oh. basically one of the ways they work. But then they interfere with uh, skeletal muscles, okay. with muscle buildup. 
you know, over time. And when you use them for a very long time, of course, you have the same effects that you have as a man when immediately start producing testosterone, mm -hmm. the same okay. effect you have. So the effects is actually catastrophic. I can tell you for sure because long time use you it beats down your immunity you can't fight infections anymore so you say like for instance this uh wrestlers who make use of a lot of steroids that's what the fit they suffer afterwards exactly they do each time they have chronic illnesses it's very very bad you know because the system is already compromised okay you've overstretched your system the liver it has been affected. The liver is supposed to help break down drugs. It has, it's been breaking a lot, a lot, a lot of drugs. It's tired, you know. So it's basically shutting down your system gradually over time, basically. And because it's an addiction too, even though when you know that you're actually endangering yourself, but you have to keep up with the Joneses, like some people will say, or keep up with that physique, you keep okay. taking it at the expense of your own health. So it's actually quite, it's a, it's a trend that we need to look into. Uh, it's, it's an emergency need to look into that and curtail it before it becomes another giant monster in front of us. Okay, in terms of uh, site fitness centers, which other centers are we likely to see this? Uh, for the women folks who go to do surgeries, you see breast transplants, facial, makeup, tummy talk. How do these surgeries, these procedures, uh, lead to drug abuse? Uh, well, you know, most of these surgeries, um, of course, anything that involves surgery involves pain. And no one, no one loves pain. pain so and no one wants to bear pain for a very long time. So they want to, as soon as they finish the procedure, you want to place them on medications that will prevent them from having any pain. Okay. And the easiest way of preventing anyone from having any slight pain is to put them on some of these medications, some of these hard opioid medications for a very long time. Okay? The normal one doesn't work on the system. Okay, so you need something really strong, strong okay. okay, to knock off the pain. So over time, the system, your body system recognizes it as part of it. If you don't even use it, you don't function properly. You get it. So you can see the dangers. You can see the cascade of events that come into play when uh, the, uh, the drug addiction sets in. All right, uh, in terms of, uh, before we go into the solutions, let's look at sportsmen and women. Uh, then people who are involved in daily, very, uh, they make do mental work. Uh, more often, like we were talking uh, before we came on set, uh, how uh, the possibility of this class of people getting hooked to drugs uh, as, a, as, a, as a way of uh, relieving the stress of the day or as a way of being able to continue with the workload and the tension uh, they face daily. Okay, you mean people that just keep fit regularly no, or people I'm, that, I'm that athletes? Athletes, athletes. they will also look at people who do more of mental work. Okay. Yes, the, mm -hmm. you know, sit on systems, uh, calculate, make, produce, production people and all that. Mm -hmm. How, what are the chances that such people who do more of intellectual work uh, aside the sportsmen could fall into this trap? Uh, well, except if uh, you have other risk factors attached. Yeah. But if you just come other and words. do your work, you in, ex words. except if you have other risk factors risk attached, factors, okay. okay, like the ones I mentioned yeah, earlier, yeah, like, yeah, like, like, yeah, like, like uh, environmental and what have you. I don't see any correlation. I mean, I just come do my work. Well, I may be having backache. There are a lot of ways you can, you can treat your backache maybe without actually using drugs. You know, there are these exercises you do, lie on your back for a while, flat surface, hard surface, mm -hmm. you know, move. In fact, we actually even advise people that sit for a very long time, do mental work, 10, within an hour, after an hour, an hour, 30 minutes, stand up, walk around, so, stretch your body, okay. you get it, keeps your body in shape. Rather than just sitting for a very long time, watching the system, of course, you end up with pain and other things. So maybe that should be a take-home advice, that right. people that long for ver work for very long hours on systems, after one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, please walk, stand up, walk around, the different yoga exercises you do, you know, share, stretch here, stretch there, you feel fine. Then you could want to inculcate um, or put, include in your activities exercises like swimming once in a while, weekends, to help stretch the muscles. Okay. Okay. Or a brisk walking. Brisk you know, walk. Yes, yes, once in a while. Okay. So it can actually really help. You don't really need to go into drugs. All right, yeah. I, I think uh, that will go out uh, for uh, my, my colleagues in, at the MCRO and other uh, of my colleagues in different departments who sit for long hours. Uh, the pharmacy says that uh, once in a while I take a walk, exactly. stretch, uh, not too good to sit uh, on your, uh, your system for long hours. All right, so let's look at, uh, let's go to the government uh, side of the divide now. Uh, there's been an issue of uh, 
drug appearing on the concurrent list. Uh, what do you think there's a backlash to this? Do you think sh that should be the case? Well, you see, drugs appearing on concurrent list, I think it's something that has appeared since 2018. You know, they want to take it away. A, a suggestion was made, a bill was passed then, that uh, drugs should be moved from exclusive list to concurrent list. I think uh, the, the the giants in the field and stakeholders have refuted that. But for well, you personally, what would be the advantages and disadvantages? You know, it has its advantages. It has right. its disadvantages. Okay. I mean, a divide as Let's to comes to. So, if you move drugs from uh, exclusive list, list. Okay. right? What the implication? is that um, you're reducing power, okay? You're reducing power from the rep federal level to the state levels as regards to drugs. Then what follows that is how do you now control? You, it, you have multiple legislations coming in, okay? Because different state governments will have different legislations for control of drugs. Sure. So while you're saying, okay, in Abuja, let's say, okay, no, in, 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 in Benue, okay. if you say, okay, we... Are not we, we, we don't want narcotics. Another state could say, well, we're good with narcotics. So you see, the problem of control becomes an issue. Two, the drug abuse we're talking about becomes an issue. In fact, it amplifies the issue of drug abuse and substance abuse. Because as it is right now, we're trying to close all gaps that could lead to drug abuse. Okay. So by the time you give, you, you have multiple legislation, some are, some are giving power, so okay, you can take this, some are not. You have an issue with control of drugs. Then talking about intellectual property as well, yeah, their intellectual rights. You can do a research on certain drug. Okay. okay. Have the result. In this state, you say, well, you can use this result. In another state, you say, no, it's an intellectual property. It's a divide. It's an issue. The international collaboration with other agencies. You have a problem with that. Who are they going to interface with when it comes to? To, to issues like that. So it will have a problem, you have issues of um, foreign investment from other companies, from other for, for, from foreign countries. You have a, uh, a decrease in foreign, in fact, the sentiment decreases when it comes to foreign investment because you don't know who to liaise with, who will be the, the major uh, stakeholder once, once they come to the country. You get it? So it's an issue that I can see we have, uh, my legs are spread here and there. On the other hand, when you divide when you, when, when you actually put it on concurrent list and then the state governments are in control of it, if, if, quote unquote, unquote, if the state governments are going to be very, very serious with the control, it's going to help because you have a lot of offices spread where people can actually go get this medication so they can manage them successfully. That's if, if. Okay, but on the overall, I think it's something that they still need to look at. I think the, that bill should be still paused, they're still on a hold, if I'm not uh, mistaken. I think they need a public hearing too, from so major to stakeholders to actually, ahead. yes, and I think that is a good way to go. You need to, you need the input of major stakeholders in situations like this, so you can be properly advised before you take any decision. But generally, uh, internationally, I think uh, most, you do well when it's on exclusive list. All yeah, right, so let's see but uh, there's, a, there's a very big issue which uh, we have with uh, we as patients when we go to the hospitals. Uh, there's always this running battle uh, uh, with pharmacists, doctors who say, okay, uh, generic names and brand names. It's always confusing because you go there, they say, uh, go get this particular product and you get there and you see it's a whole different name. And the pharmacist tells you they're all the same, they're just different brands. Why is there always this rift between generic names and brands and why is that some specific health professionals like doctors and pharmacists uh, are you know inclined towards one direction is it the financial gain they get by promoting that brand or is it the effect the efficacy of that drug okay when it comes and to how does it lead to uh, drug abuse okay when it um, when you talk about pharmacists doctors uh, relationships one thing you need to understand is I think we need to go to the books and find out what is, what, what is expected of us. Okay. Uh, there's what we call rational drug prescription or rational drug rational prescribing. Rational drug prescription. Exactly, or rational when drugs prescribing. Come so it comes into play right from the doctor's end. Okay. okay? So, and one of the key take-home points in rational drug prescribing is you prescribe based on generics, on generic names. You know, drugs are being uh, identified by their generic names. 
club. That okay. is yes. For for my viewer there who doesn't really understand, understand. the difference between generic. When you say generic, what are you, what are you implying? Okay. Um. Let let's let's take an example. All right. We have uh, Panadol. Panadol. All right. right. We have uh, Panadol Nights. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, but say I, 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 I deliberately okay. just kept okay, paracetamol okay. Right, down first, as I'm bringing it. Then right. we have Antony Dodd. Okay. Say that's your brand of Panadol. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So right. the whole thing is um, all these are, are contain what we call paracetamol. All right. Paracetamol is the active okay. ingredient in all of them. Okay. 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 The branding comes because okay, I produce that medication, so I want to give it to my many patients. Many oh. of Okay. 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 So um, sometimes we always advise to say, okay, just go by the generics. Okay. The generic name name is paracetamol. Paracetamol. Okay. Exactly. Whatever the pre the patient is going out to get will be paracetamol, paracetamol. regardless of whether it's Anthony Doll mm. or uh, okay. my own brand. brand. Okay. At least he gets that. But by the time you say, okay, get Anthony Doll, and somehow your own market is limited in say your factories and. Lagos, Lagos for instance. okay, and you've not got that power to actually move your products Improve down it. here. Okay. Does that mean that the patient uh -huh. that is prescribed that drug in Abuja will travel now to Lagos, Lagos. to get that drug? Mm -hmm. So you see where, where we have oh issues. That's not fair enough. You get it. Some of these drugs have been uh, delisted for a very long period of time as well. Then some of the generic, some of the some of the brand names may sound exactly I like, like uh, a generic another generic drug of a different class so those are some of the inherent dangers okay like uh, uh septrin okay what we call septrin yeah cotrimozazo that is the main name wow. there's a closer drug to it called clotrimozazo it's an antifungal drug completely this is antibacterial yeah, yeah, antifungal, antifungal. antifungal. Yeah. you can see it so by the time i produce my own brand of septrin is it right for health sector, any health sector for that to occur, is that not like a uh, leveraging on a name? Uh, no, no. Um, we have been tutored. These are, these are facts that have, that have been in the books for a very, very long time. Okay? Exactly. That is why it's, it's once you're in the field, you know all these differences. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? okay? The problem just comes when you start introducing brand names. Yeah. Okay. Because some people, they introduce brand names that now sound alike, like a generic drug. And it is very, very it can be very, very disastrous sometimes, because that drug is treating a completely different disease. Okay. What you are producing is for a completely different disease. You get it. And if you don't have someone that is well schooled or a, a seasoned professional in that field, he may just give you a thinking. Okay, this is what you are treating. You are actually trying to treat headache. He's giving you a drug for epilepsy, because they sound alike. A lot of that has happened, you get it. And it's because of the brand name, okay. generic name issue. If it's generic name, no matter where you go in the world, you can still get that drug. Okay. No matter. But if it's brand name, it's very, very, very difficult for you to get that drug once the production, the quantity being produced in the market is gone and another batch has not come. Okay, so we advise rational drug prescribing, prescribed based on generic generic uh, names, names not not not, not uh, brand. brand names well, then let's go to it said that every time there's an issue a war or any issue the, the women and children suffer the most uh, let's look at uh, children in terms of drugs uh, how would you say, would you advise parents to expose their kids to drugs that might give that feeling of euphoria like you rightly pointed out uh, like we see cough syrups, some cough syrups and all that. Uh, what are the dangers of exposing young children to such drugs who, over time, they might become addictive and start abusing such drugs like uh, we see uh, cough syrups? Uh, well, the dangers uh, inherent to that is, basically, I would advise, okay, let's take it this way, I would okay. advise that uh, parents don't keep their medications carelessly to start with All right. because that is another risk factor uh, 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 a parent could be taking a controlled medication over time okay and the child always sees him oh he peeps the pot he pops dentist in the mouth and it goes tomorrow he oh let me just try this oh wow this is nice when the dad goes out he takes it again or the mom's you know and then gradually secretly you're having a drug addict within your own house we always say keep medicines away from children it's always on every label of medication keep it away 
from children. So I think uh, we need to take time and start looking at what has been written on the prescription or on, on the drug that we be, were being given in the hospital. We need to be very careful. Drugs are, are chemicals. to you let's look at that from that end always go to a professional always go to a pharmacist to dispense your medication your prescription of medication there are reasons for that let me clear that when the, the, the cost doesn't actually translate to effectiveness okay so the time okay. the fact that i'm taking okay certain brand of drug that costs ten thousand doesn't mean that the mm -hmm. one costing 100 naira mm -hmm. is not effective okay. no it's not one. it's not please i we need to clear the air on that so studies have been done on okay just sometimes what happens is for some organizations the packaging and other things ends up making the cost more, more. you get it if i'm producing a, a medication today and i'm producing just one tablet inside a package, In package like this you don't expect, and then okay is that as long as is the, the mic set on channel nine down you don't expect the cost to be the same okay you get you get it okay all right so Whenever, whenever the prescription is written, in generics, go to your pharmacist. He will never give you a product that is substantial. He will give you direct, it's substandard. Yeah. He will never give yeah. like, stand correct, yeah. like, substandard. Yeah. He will give you the right product. Okay? So cost doesn't translate to effectiveness yeah. in most times. Whilst, whilst some doctors might say, okay, I actually just want XYZ brand, it's maybe the patient has been thriving on that particular brand more. He has used it before and it has worked due to biological changes. So they will advise, okay, get this brand if you can. You get it. But if you can't, you get other you get other brands. All right. Okay. Uh, my final question will be to the insecurity facing Nigeria. How much would you ascribe drug abuse to it? Well, I see drug abuse is they are intertwined. Okay. One thing I and I think that is an angle that the uh, government really will really need to look into. All right. There's no one that is in a state of mind, you know, that will carry some of the activities, the heinous crimes you're, you're sharing, banditry and other things. They are assisted by some of these drugs, okay. some of these hard substances. The moment you take them, you're not, in your, no. you're not yourself. You're, you're in an altered state of mind. You can do anything to get money. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if we can address this drug abuse, I believe it could help yeah. in decreasing, you know, this issue of insurgents that we're having, insecurity that we're having in the country, especially those that relate to drugs. I know there are some that is either political motivated, I don't have facts for that, but I know anybody in his right frame of mind may not engage in some of these uh, crimes. All right, uh, well said. That's how we're going to call it a wrap on uh, the program dialogue that we've been talking to uh, a pharmacist the clinical pharmacist Abdullahi Abdullahi, uh, who has helped us uh, look at uh, the issue of drug abuse, defining it and telling us the risk factors and going further to give us advice on the best way out. I want to say thank you very much uh, for joining me in the studios Welcome this evening and uh, letting Nigerians who well uh, informed. All right, uh, that's how we call it a wrap on the program. And uh, this is wishing that you've learned one, two or three things on uh, the issue of drug abuse, uh, the menace and the reasons why you shouldn't go towards that direction. Thank you very much. My name is Anthony Momodi. Good evening, Nigeria.